Hi, how are you doing today? I'm your host, Rich, and we have Rich TV Live with our very special guest, the CEO of Cucho Copper Corp, Vince Sirachi. How are you doing today, Vince? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Excited to have you on our show. And I have a few questions that I wanted to ask you today to introduce Cucho Copper Corp to our community. The first question is, Cucho Copper Corp is a Canadian resource development company focused on expanding and developing the Cucho high-grade copper zig project. Can you tell us a little bit more about the company? Sure. We, we bought this project <clears throat> from Capstone Mining in late 2017, and we paid $29 million for this. Um, you know, we, we saw, we were out looking for an advanced stage asset. And what we saw in this project was a high grade, high margin copper asset with relatively low capital requirements and, and the potential to make it better and more valuable. Um, and, you know, what's important here is that <clears throat> this is, this is an advanced stage asset. It, it already has over 1 billion pounds of copper equivalent uh, already wow. defined without, without any more drilling required. So in other words, this is a, a development stage project, um, which has been significantly de-risked and is, is essentially on its way uh, or on its path through permitting and, and a production decision. There, are, there simply aren't many of these types of projects uh, around in the copper space right now. Uh, and I think, you know, really important to note as well is that we are in a safe jurisdiction. Um, we're, we're situated in northern British Columbia in Canada, uh, one of the safest mining jurisdictions globally. And we also have a number of producing mines um, within the region. Um, for example, uh, Pretium's Bruce Jack and, and Imperial Metals Red Crisp Project. Fantastic. We love copper here at Rich TV Live and we love early stage companies that have something special. It sounds like you guys are on track to do something huge here. Why is copper mining so essential for the future? And why should investors be paying attention? You know, copper, copper has very traditional uses. Um, you know, infrastructure, wires in the sky, power grids, you know, electronics and appliances, um, transportation, renewable generation. Um, and, you know, that's, that's always with us as the population continues to increase and a lot of these countries continue to build out this infrastructure. So, you know, those were the, the, the primary uses of copper. Um, but what's really come about in the last number of years is this, um, we call it a green revolution and decarbonization, uh, which will be a major contributor to copper's increased demand. Uh, for example, you know, in the EV industry and the renewable energy and technologies, you know, in, in electric vehicles, for example, um, which is a, a driving component of copper these days, you know, an EV would take up to say four times as much copper as your typical conventional car. Um, and I think, you know, to note is the copper industry itself is in a bit of a paradox right now. We've seen miners costs increasing exponentially. We see grade curves declining significantly, very few mines coming online and these big, big copper mines um, that feed uh, a lot of this um, supply into the market, they can take up to 20 years by the time they're discovered and permitted and built. So, you know, at this point, um, you know, the stage is set for the future. We have uh, things like the U.S. close to finalizing a multi-trillion dollar long-term economic program. And, and you see where their focus is. It's on infrastructure. And these days, that is more targeted towards the green economy. So EVs, renewables, charging stations, these are all very copper intensive. And, you know, post COVID, I think you're going to see more and more countries around the world, you know, spending money on things like infrastructure and targeted more towards these, um, these copper intensive type projects as uh, they're looking for job creation um, coming out of uh, the environment that we're in. So, you know, it's, um, it's, it's set up very well from the demand side over the coming years. Um, I think we're going to continue to have some supply side issues and, you know, what that ultimately translates into is better copper prices. Um, you've also got calls out from some of the biggest uh, banks and analysts out there from JP Morgan's and Goldman Sachs and Bank of America saying, you know, this is the next commodity super cycle. And if they're right, copper prices should go higher. I agree. I agree with that. I think the copper and I didn't know this until I started really researching copper learning from companies like yourself that are in the copper sector, copper is being used in so many areas. So Cucho Copper is uniquely positioned 
And you just provided a progress report on the feasibility study of its high grade copper zinc project. Can you tell us a little bit more about the results and how they will impact the project's economics? And also what is the upside potential of the near resource drill targets? Yeah, the, I think the most important part of the recent update is how we shifted the way we're going to mine this project. So, you know, one of their, one of the biggest lenses in, in the sequence um, is very near surface. So we've shifted our philosophy from an underground mining methodology to an open pit mining methodology. And what really what that means is the cost to mining comes down substantially when you open pit something. Um, and, you know, from that perspective, when you're able to lower costs, um, we expect that to translate into better overall project economics. So, you know, how much money this project will make and, and what it's worth, if you will. So that would be, um, you know, I think the most pertinent part of the recent update. And, you know, the results of that will be seen in our upcoming feasibility study, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a bit. Um, and as far as the upside potential goes, you know, we've got, I, I put this into two categories. So we've got what we call more brownfields targets or near resource targets. So where, where our existing deposits already reside and where that, you know, one point over 1 billion pounds of copper already is, um, we see the expansion, uh, the potential to grow that even bigger, um, you know, with, with additional drilling. Um, and, you know, we've got a good degree of confidence. Um, we understand that trend of mineralization because it's there. Um, so it's more of a predictive exercise. Uh, we have historic drill holes uh, and significant intercepts around these areas already um, that also increase our confidence about the continuation of this mineralization. Um, you know, and another, another thing to note is, you know, there's, there's three lenses, if you will, that comprise uh, you know, this resource. Well, one of them, um, uh, the SUMAC lens, we call it, um, isn't is approximately 10 million tons of mineralization that's not that won't be accounted for in this upcoming feasibility study. Um, we just haven't had the, the time or the resources over the number of years to um, to drill that out to get it into a, a more confident category to include in this feasibility study. But it's there. Um, you know that's almost one third of the resource of the project, um, and you know that's valuable. Um, you know, what we think will happen there is that that will get tacked on to say mine life, but there's um, definitely some inher inherent value there that won't be reflected um, in what you see in the upcoming fees. Um, and, you know, in addition to that, we've got these, um, we call them greenfields targets. So pure exploration. Um, this project existed for a while and there's been literally no follow-up exploration since 1990 on a number of these um, greenfields type opportunities. And we do have prospective geology, it repeats and folds itself. So the same geology that hosts the current deposits repeats and folds three times throughout our claims position. Um, and we've got five or six targets there um, that um, we're excited to get back into the field to and test. Um, you know, important to note those who don't know much about VMS districts, if you will, they tend to grow. Uh, you tend to find more uh, of what you started with in, the, in this type of environment and these types of um, districts. Now, the company has received significant funding from one of the world's largest precious metals companies. Can you tell us a little bit more about this agreement and how it benefits Kuchko? Yes. Um, so back in 2017, when we completed um, this acquisition, Wheat and Precious Metals, um, you know, one of the, one of the largest uh, streaming companies uh, in the world, um, completed with us with what was in quantum uh, about a hundred million dollar financing package. Wow. Um, you know, this included uh, components of equity, uh, debt, and development capital to build the project. Um, so, you know, Wheat and Precious have been great partners with us uh, throughout this journey. Uh, their involvement uh, should also help investors feel comfortable regarding the viability of this project as they have one of the best technical teams out there and they understand what they're investing in. Now, Kucho also has continued to make headway in its negotiations with the Taltan 
and Casca Dina nations, which is extremely important, including entering into economic participation agreement with negotiations with Taltan in July. Can you tell us why this was a crucial step forward in the Kucho project? Yeah, this is this is an extremely important. This is extremely important for any project, yes. not just Kucho. You know, anywhere in the world um, these days to obtain that social license. Um, and in this case, it's with our First Nation communities here in BC. Um, you know, we're lucky. We're in a region of BC where both Teltan and Casca are both mining friendly First Nations. Uh, we have built exceptional relationships with both of them. Um, you know, and, and we will continue to work with both uh, these nations in a fair and respectful manner. And I believe both the company and the communities will benefit from this project. I really respect that. I don't think too many people understand the importance of having relationships with the people that are living around the lands that you're drilling on. That could be a game changer uh, one way or the other with the company. So I'm happy that you guys have those relationships. Now, the Cucho team brings decades of experience in mineral exploration, capital markets, finance, among other industries. Who are the key members and what do they bring to the table? Yeah, that, this is a good point because this team, when we when we bought this asset and we put the new team in place uh, for this asset, um, you know, it was really tailor made uh, for this acquisition and advancing this asset. You know, from the capital markets markets experience to the technical expertise, uh, both on the board and the management team, um, to you know, like I said, um, acquire this and advance it through feasibility and permitting. Uh, we've got board members such as Stephen Quinn, who you know was the CEO of Sherwood Copper, who used to own this asset um, before merging with Capstone back in the day. Um, Stephen knows this asset well and has always believed it would go into production. Um, we have people like Bill Bennett on the board. Um, he's the ex-BC Mines Minister, so a lot of good guidance from him uh, that comes through the permitting aspects of this. Uh, our technical team. Vast experience with uh, working um, in these types of deposits and these types of settings and working through feasibility studies. So, you know, an excellent team um, to, you know, to help uh, move this asset uh, along its path. Now here at Rich TV Live, we love to identify undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed companies before they explode. What should investors watch out for from Cucho Copper in the coming months? Well, I'm going to bring that back to the coming weeks or week, if you will. Um, Great. You know, we will be releasing our feasibility study. Um, and this is an extremely significant milestone in the life cycle of this asset. And it is many assets um, where it's the, it's the, I guess, the document of highest confidence. You know, the feasibility study is what, um, you know, companies make production decisions from, and it's what they can go out and raise hundreds of millions of dollars off of with the banks to build. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. This will, you know, showcase what the project is worth. Um, and, you know, it's, um, it's, again, just the highest kind of call it de-risk point in, in, in this project's uh, life cycle to date. So, you know, it's also a point where, you know, um, the markets, the capital markets where, you know, after my feasibility study, it would open the door to things like analyst coverage. Um, we'll be looking at a number of um, strategic initiatives from partners and partner financing, maybe M&A opportunities. You know, these are all value enhancement opportunities, which I think will be sparked from, um, you know, the completion and the release of uh, the results of our feasibility study. That sounds fantastic. Our community is filled with investors from all over the world, specifically in three major markets where the market you can trade is in Germany, Canada, and the United States. So for those investors that are all over the world that are going to watch this interview, what is the best way for them to get in touch with the company if they have any questions or if they just want to speak to you directly if possible? You know, at this uh, probably the easiest, visit our website, um, www.cucho.ca. Um, you know, we trade on the TSXV under the ticker symbol KC um, and, you know, go through the website. Um, we, you can um, send an inquiry in. Those come to me um, and happy to answer and communicate with, um, you know, shareholders and any questions they may have. That sounds fantastic. Now, I must remind everyone that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research. 
before you invest in anything that we talk about or discuss here on Rich TV Live. In saying that, I think that this is a company that everybody should put on their radar. Everyone should put on their watch list. Cucho Copper Corp, you can see the symbol right here. Thank you for joining us today. The CEO, Vince Sirachi. Thank you, Vince. Thanks for having me, Rich. Always a pleasure. Love to invite you back anytime you have big breaking news or anything you want to talk about. Love to invite you back here on Rich TV Live. And for those of you that are watching, if you're not winning, you're not watching, we bring you the winners and we bring them to you first. Thank you for watching, everybody, and have a nice day. <laughs>